Well, hello, Celebration family. Once again, we gather together around God's Word. Well, as you know, we are talking about occupying the house, and not just us occupying the house of God or occupying our houses, but also God occupying us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and as that we are responsible to allow God to take up full and complete residence within us. We yield ourselves, we surrender ourselves so that God can work in us and through us, molding us and shaping us into the image of Christ. And this is how we're able to pick up our mantle. It is Christ enabling us and he is the one who enables us to prevail beyond the times. And all of this is working and taking place as God has our attention and we have God's attention. God is looking at us. He is watching over us. He is focused on the things that are taking place in and around our lives, just as any parent would be paying attention to their children. And God is also doing the same thing. We have God's attention. And I would like to share with you from Psalm 16, verses 8 and 9, and it says, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. And this is one of the verses that we had been talking about uh, in this series. And we are in a place just as the psalmist is in a position where we have to choose where our focus is going to be. You and I can focus on the things of this world and all the things that are going on around us, or we can make God our priority. God needs to be our priority. He needs to be our focus, just as he is watching over us, as he cares for us. It says, the psalmist says he set the Lord continually before him. In other words, God was always something that he kept in focus, in mind, and something that he would be able to see and perceive as he would manage and navigate through the challenges and the difficulties of life. So much so that he would be able to see what God was saying and doing and his focus would be on God so much that no matter what else was happening, he would not be shaken. This ought to be your testimony and mine. We ought to be able to have this same experience in our lives. Verse 9 says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. This is what happens when God watches over us, when God is our covering, when we are walking with God and he is walking with us. We have a heart that is made glad. The Spirit of the Lord makes us glad. Do you know that is an attribute of the Holy Spirit? It's an attribute of God. It's the joy of the Lord. The Word of God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is where you gain strength when your focus is on the Lord, when he is continually set before you, even as he is watching over you. As we watch over uh, the, the ways that we live and the things that we do uh, in, from the divine perspective, in the same way God is watching over us to guard us and to keep us as his dear children. And so, as a result, we are made glad because there's an exchange of the Spirit of God between God and us, and it causes the attributes of God to come alive within us. And so, He makes us glad. It says, my flesh will dwell securely. You and I can have confidence as we are operating in these bodies that God is with us, that He is watching over us, that He is our, our cover and our shield. He is our healer. He is our deliverer. He is the one who enables us to dwell securely. And this is a picture of what theologians have called a quorum deo. Quorum deo, it simply means in Latin, before the face of God. You and I must live our lives before the face of God. 
when God is watching over us and he is there with his focus on us, it helps us to stay focused on walking in the ways of God. When we're mindful that God is watching us, that he is our quorum Deo, and that we are able to, to persevere in the ways of the Lord, in the things of God. Uh, this phrase, it literally means to uh, that, that, that whatever is taking place, whatever is happening in our life, God has his gaze fixed on us. His focus is on us. He is watching over us. In fact, the scripture says God is watching over his word to perform it. And his word is what is in us. That's why we meditate on it day and night. We are living out the word of God. And as we apply the principles of God in his word, we have divine transformation take place because the spirit of God who indwells us, who is within us, begins to uh, come to a place of fruition whereby you and I begin to look and act and respond like Jesus. This is why the Christian life is so exciting because God is working in us. He is enabling us as he watches over us because we are living before the face of God. We are living as he is in the midst of us, as he indwells us. And so as a result, we live Coram Deo. We live before the face of God. He watches over us. We live in his presence. We live uh, in, in a way where we are uh, looking at his word and his ways and our desire is to live it out as Jesus was the word made flesh and dwelt among us. You and I are also walking in his ways. We are, we are taking on the attributes of Christ, the word of God, and it too is coming to life within us and we are able to do whatever we do go wherever we go and the things that we do and the places that we go are all under God's covering his focus he is looking he is watching over us he is the one that we are concerned with to make sure that we are faithful to him and that we are walking in the ways of his word in fact we see this picture of God's sovereignty uh, 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 here in Acts 9 4 uh, where Saul uh, he, he is on his way to persecute the Christians and in verse 4 it says he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him Saul Saul why are you persecuting me and here is God intervening in Saul's life you see, God couldn't intervene unless God was watching, unless he had a focus, unless he was paying attention. And God is paying attention to your life and mine. And he has the ability to intervene. In fact, he does intervene. He causes things to happen that otherwise would not happen except God intervened. And uh, we see in verse 5 that his response, Saul's response here is, Who are you, Lord? He says, who are you, Lord? He's acknowledging that whoever this is, whatever has just happened to me, it wasn't just some random person. It wasn't some, your average situation or circumstance. This is something powerful. This is something awesome. This is something that is bigger than me. It's amazing. And it has humbled me and it brought him down. So much so that he said, who are you, Lord? He acknowledges that 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 experience, that person, that entity that brought him down was Lord over him. Is God Lord over your life? Does he have power and authority over you? Are you submitted to him? You see, the Lord responds and he says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Oh, saints of God. God wants us to live Coram Deo. He wants us to come uh, into this world and function and operate as if we are under God's watch, the God's covering. He is watching us. And so we ought to have integrity in our life. We ought to operate in the righteousness of God. We ought to be faithful to God in all that we are doing as he is watching over us. In verse 35 of uh, Hebrews 10, it says, therefore, 
Do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Saints of God, I pray that you receive what's promised to you, that you are able to receive and experience the fulfillment of the promises of God as you live your life uh, under the gaze of God. God, allowing God to guard your steps and order your steps and make the way for you as you submit yourself and carefully live knowing God is watching. God has, has a full view and understanding of all that is taking place in your life. You are not alone. You are not just randomly going along as if God uh, doesn't care or doesn't exist because he does. And when you understand that and you live accordingly, you will have an experience that will cause you to have the, the, the fullness of God's divine attributes flowing in your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and all these good things will be happening for you. In fact, even as the psalmist says in Psalm 16, 8, 9, he says, I have set the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand and I will not be shaken. Saints of God, I pray that you will not be shaken today because you have set the Lord continually before you. You are living in a way that will enable God's direction and his will and his ways to take place in your life, that you will be fruitful in all of the attributes of God, walking in an integrity, in the wisdom of God, in the truth of God. And so that verse nine says in Psalm 16, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will dwell securely. This is God's will for you. This is what God wants to accomplish in our lives. He wants to see us have a heart of gladness. He wants us to be people who are rejoicing and people who are able to dwell securely. God wants your attention because God's attention is on you. I pray that you are living Coram Deo today. I pray that you are able to occupy the house and the Spirit of God is able to occupy you and you are able to take up your mantle so that you are able to prevail beyond the times because you are living Coram Deo, because God's attention is focused on you. God is looking to use you, to mold you, to shape you, to give you his attributes so that you would be able to have the fullness of God all the way to the end when you will hear those faithful words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord because you live Coram Deo.